I do have here um, uh, the video from one of um, one mother from uh, uh, an autistic kid who participate in our research, and um, she has something to say. Hello, my name is Jen. I have a ten-year-old son with autism. Milo was born in 2003 and diagnosed in 2005 as being on the spectrum. He's nonverbal. He's never spoken a word in his entire life. He's not self-injurious. He has his own special autism like they all do, which is why I think the stem cell research and treatment is so important for these kids. Um, I look at my son a lot and, and feel like he's just trapped. He is trapped inside his own brain. Circuits are going crazy. He can't figure it out. Of course, I can't figure it out. And I believe that he deserves to have a voice. And right now he doesn't. I mean, they, they're making headway with iPads and such like that. But it's more than that. It's more than being able to say that, you know, I want a piece of bread. It's, it's about saying how you feel and about um, who you love or who you like or, or whatever, those kind of things. And he's never said I love you. He's never said mom with any meaning. Um, he's. He's really sweet, you know, and, and I would just die to find out what's going on inside his brain. And I know that's never going to happen until he gets some type of stem cell treatment individualized for him. And I have so much hope in this um, field that it gets me so excited, you know, which is just the opposite from, you know, always crying about it. <laughs> so I really support what you do. Um, I wouldn't say our lives hang in the balance, but there's nothing that could be more important to me than being able to hear my son's voice and to know what he, you know, a, a month ago he had an emergency appendectomy. He must have been going around in pain for a couple of weeks and never once was able to express that. Don't even know if he knows what pain is or, or what, it was not until he was doubled over and we went to emergency that we figured out what was wrong. And that's just so, so hardcore to think of. As a mom, your kid being in pain and them not being able to tell you, it's like, this all the time. You're not going to understand a word. And that's kind of how I think his receptive learning uh, is as well. He just like has, you know, hands over his ears, hands over his mouth, hands over his eyes. Everything's blurred. Nothing makes sense. So I can't express enough how important this research is. Um, I mean, think about all these kids, these nonverbal kids, all these kids stuck in their brains. I think the whole world should just stop, hand you a bazillion dollars and get to work, you know, get the, get the research done so it can be done safely. Um, so that's kind of our, our story in a nutshell. Um, again, my kid's wonderful, but he is trapped. And I never really knew how bad it was until I had my second son. And the, the conversations that we have, the connection that we have, I feel like I have been, you know, he has been stolen from me. Um, I was given this, this body, but without the brain functioning, you know, and I will do anything to get that functioning again. Um, not again. He never had it to get it functioning, period. But um, good luck with everything you do. Uh, I love what you guys do. I wish I would have stayed in school. I would have studied, you know, this. <laughs> but anyways, I, I, I hope that this helps. And um, I hope one day to be giving you a, a video of Milo talking. Um, all right. Thank you and have a very good day.